Today we're going to be making a pressure balancing device so that you can get your carbs tuned. Today I'm going to be doing this for an Edger 250. You can see that I have already made a frame here. I have left four spots in case I ever buy a four barrel carburetor. I can tune that as well. For this video, we're just going to be using the two bottles to balance the two carbs on the Ninja 250. One of the setbacks of doing a traditional single loop manometer, um, which you can do for the 250, is that if one of the lines gets disconnected, then um, it'll act as like a straw where you know, one side will be open to atmospheric pressure and it'll be able to suck the liquid through the carb. And so in theory, this won't be able to do that. Here I'm using quarter inch ID vinyl tubing. 3 16 would have worked better, but this worked okay. So we're gonna drill all holes to match the OD to get a tight fit on the caps of these bottles. The liquid shown here is just blue dyed water. I didn't have the perfect size drill bit, so first I tried to kind of auger it out with the drill bit I had. Um, at that point, I tried a couple different methods. I tried heating the hole a little bit with a blowtorch. Didn't work very well. Um, but the best thing I did uh, find to work was one of those burr tools. You just kind of slowly work your way um, with it. Alright, next I measured out um, two lengths of about five feet. That's just what seemed uh, what I, like what I needed for my application. Um, check, you know, see if you're using a different bike, you might want to use a different length. Yeah, so with these guys, we're not going in very far. Um, we're just gonna barely go in because Otherwise, they'd have a chance to contact the water. I'm testing these out for the first time. They're called red caps on Amazon, and um, you put them over the tip, like a little, um, well, you guys know what this is like. All right, now that our vacuum tool is uh, dried overnight with silicone, we're gonna go ahead and get started uh, removing the tank because we gotta replace the idle jets or the slow jets, uh, you, people call them both ways, on the carburetors. So we'll go ahead and get started with that. I got the uh, disconnect on my battery done, so um, there should be no uh, power getting to any of the electronics. It's a good safety point. Um, we'll go ahead and get started. Make sure your pet cock is set to off. And then you can go ahead and remove the fuel outlet and inlet. I like to use a tool to help me get some of these hoses off. Okay, so sometimes these hoses can be stubborn. Um, and I like to use, I have this little tool, uh, it's like a pick tool. And I like to kind of like push it down, like so. 
Uh, I find that I break less hoses by doing it this way. They do make some um, special pliers that grab on. Uh, they actually grab on, they have a curve to them. This is just a regular piece of uh, pair of pliers, but you get the idea. But this is what I like to do. Be careful not to stab yourself with the uh, pokey end on it. But uh, yeah, I find I break less hoses this way. Notice I have the uh, pet cock set to off here. All right, now we're good to take our take the tank off. So I'm going to first disconnect the cables, and then we'll undo the linkage here. Uh, just because I find that these swell up with gas and you can't necessarily reuse them. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to replace the float needle. Um, so I got two of those, I'm going to replace those. And then uh, the slow jets. Let's see if I can get a close up on these guys. These kind of control, from my understanding, um, the mid-range to idle. Um, and help with your having issues with cold starts. Stock, the bike came with 38s, number 38s, these are 40s. Um, and so I'm going to swap these guys out, Let's see how that works. There's a drain on the bottom of these, so you can do that beforehand, but I always forget. So you basically put a little hose on that nipple there, and then unscrew that guy, and the fuel will drain the bowl, so you don't have to deal with this fuel on the table like this. All right, so I was looking online, and also looked on my manual that I had, and the, you know, getting this float bowl off, I could not figure it out. Um, the manual actually said there's two uh, Phillips head screws with lock washers that hold it in. But I looked at a Briggs and Stratton um, carburetor and there's a pin holding that float bowl on. And I noticed that there's a, a, a pin in this one as well. And so basically yeah, I use that tool like that to just pull it out. And then we'll see if it comes out. Yes, it does come out. Alright, so that's how that comes off. All right, so after reading about this whole uh, adjusting the float height situation, I found out that, see right here, internally to this uh, kind of plunger float needle, um, is what they call this, there's a rubber portion here that kind of closes, that pushes down and closes off in the valve, the valve seat. Um, and so there's an internal spring in here. And so you want to, measure the height when uh, the tang is just touching on the tip of the spring but not compressing it. You can see here, um, that's what it's like when it's compressed. The tang is this, uh, this portion here. See there's a metal bit right there and this piece slides on there like that. 
and, and so you want to get it toward just that that piece is just hitting the tang but not compressing the internal spring this internal spring right here oh okay well I'm glad that I took that off to show you guys because this one does not want to compress so that means it's a faulty part right there so that's good news it's a potential problem that we could be solving right now okay so I will replace that guy with the, the demonstration piece that I was using. Now I'm not sure that I put the uh, tangs on there the correct way, so I'm gonna remove this cover as well, just to double check that I'm doing everything correctly. metal part goes towards this end so it kind of bends back and it bends towards that guy is where you want the metal to go and this side is left free which is how I had it but I'm glad I checked you can kind of see there how that works okay so now that I know which way that goes I can replace my float Slide my pen back in here. The ground's wearing thin, the curtain's now closing. It's quitting time. They say give it time, but I gave it all mine. Now I'm empty. Our pen is in. Now we'll check this guy real quick to see what condition. And I can't hold the weight of the world if I can't pay the rent and keep food on the plate. Well, then what do I say to my girl? Like, sorry, but it didn't work. Guess I probably should have thought about So, my strategy for adjusting these. Is just taking my lifting up on the float so there's room to adjust, and then just ever so slightly bending that tab just a hair. And yes, I did bend it too far, so I'm gonna bend it back. This takes some time to get right. Make sure that you measure both floats and take your time to get the right height adjustment. All right, so here I've, I've bent the tangs correctly. Um, and I'm just gonna show you guys the height. See that's barely rested on here. I don't want it to go all the way upside down because then it will um, you know, compress that spring like we talked about. Um, but anyways, so right here, uh, the spec is 17, and so I went just a hair um, shorter at 16. Yeah, you can see that pretty good. Um, so that it will have to raise the fuel level up a little bit more before it cuts off. Now the reason I did that was because I put the uh, K&N style air filter on it, so it's going to get a little bit more air, so a little bit more fuel makes sense. All right, now we can go ahead and change the idle jets. Now these are the main jets on top here, the top portion screws out. And down here is idle jets. This is the idle mixture screw right here. All these are clean, so we're not really doing that job right now. But if you just bought your bike or this is the first time you're tearing into it, you definitely do want to clean all your jets. Make sure everything's clean. So. On the top it'll say 38, so this guy says 38, so that confirms that that is 38 and we're replacing the proper jet. Confirm that this guy says 40 on it, and it does. Okay, the next thing I'm going to do is, now that I got both of my uh, slow jets or idle jets in there. Got that guy now. Is I'm going to tighten up and then reverse these um, idle mixture screws. 
so that I'm making sure that it's set to the um, kind of the baseline of two and a half turns on each one. Uh, just to make sure that everything's balanced. The whole point of this is that we have even vacuum. You know, everything should be even between these carbs. So we'll go two and a half in this guy. One. Two. Two and a half. Two and a half. All right, now our idle mixture screw is set correctly. I um, just want to point out that you can see this gasket, like I said, doesn't quite fit in here. It's swelled up. Um, I'm going to actually see if I, because I saved the old gaskets last time I swelled up and see if it's dried out any. Um, probably hasn't, but I'll go go get one really quick to see. Well, I'm shocked. They have dried out. So, well, if you buy cheap, cheapo gaskets, and you replace them all the time, you might be able to ha let your old ones dry out. That's crazy to me. Um, anyways, I guess I'll use these. All right, now we can go put this back on the bike. All right, so this is the setup. I have a temporary fuel setup. Um, you know, this is kind of a dangerous situation, so do it at your own risk. Um, you wanna make sure that there's no fuel leaks of any kind. I have a fire extinguisher. I think it's easier to set it up that way though because then you can access this whole area I have this extra long uh, Phillips head screwdriver that I'm going to be used to adjust the screw that sinks the two butterfly valves. This is the angle that I'm going in at when I'll be adjusting it. All right, so here's a close-up of my setup. This screw right here uh, that I'm touching is the um, adjustment screw. And then you can see my two clear tubes right here and back right there are hooked up directly behind uh, these guys on the carburetor. Um, now I was wondering if I should plug these off or anything like that, but this is the vacuum source I believe for the carbs, or, uh, you know, they create the, the vacuum source there. So I think if you just disconnect these, you don't have to plug them. Um, I'm not 100% sure on that, so if anybody knows different, if I'm doing this wrong, um, let me know in the comments. Where you hook up the fuel is that guy right here. Um, now, I need to rethink my temporary fuel source because I did actually have a leak. Um, so be very careful, you know, and I'm not you know, advising any specific way how to do it. I'm just saying be careful if you're going to do it this way. All right, so we got everything set up. Um, new fuel system. Everything is ready to go. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, turn her on and see how she goes. All right, so uh, I warmed it up a bit, and now that it's warm, uh, I took the choke off, and it is starting to kind of uh, be unbalanced here, so we're gonna try and play with the settings a little bit. A tiny water actually bounced up into this, so. I guess be aware of that. I'm gonna cut it off a little bit and get a better connection.
feeling great about the setup right now. So at this point, I was pretty frustrated with the whole setup and I didn't film the actual adjustment process. So I went back and refilmed it so that you can see the actual screw I'm turning and how I'm accessing the screw. Then I go ahead and adjust the screw clockwise and counterclockwise to show the different level heights on the bottles when you adjust the screw. You can see here that I've added two additional bottles. The setup is the same. I'm not using those bottles, they're just there for a future upgrade. Now you can see that the right side is moving up. And now I turned it way counterclockwise. So the other side will be unbalanced. And now I'll get it back to where I had it before. It should be pretty balanced. I didn't remember exactly where the screw was <laughs> when I had it balanced, so it took me a while, but just a little bit of fiddling and I got it back on track. So what happened there was I lowered the water level because of the bubbling action and it actually ran out of water down here. So maybe if you had taller um, bottles, you might be better off because it wouldn't empty it out. I balance the bike at idle, but I'm not sure if that's the proper way to do it. I'm pretty satisfied with that. It's pretty level. Okay, so a couple things. Um, my idle issue hasn't been solved. Uh, one thing I did to keep prevent stuff from going up the tubes, I think it must be splashing around when I rev a lot, and then it gets sucked up through the top. Um, I loop these uh, cords around so that if anything gets down below, it's not going to get sucked back up. It'll try to shoot back down. So anyways, I'll show you what I got from uh, you know, my tuning. So, that's pretty good. Um, you see, it'll, it'll stay at this idle speed. Um, you know, they move a little bit, but it's, I mean, it's, they're pretty even. Uh, and then it'll just drop down. In hindsight, I think higher viscosity fluids, such as an oil or something, would have worked a lot better um, so as to prevent bubbles from forming and splashing up into the tubes that sucked in through the carbs. Um, also, if you don't uh, pull one of the tubes, that also helps. Um, but we still need to solve this problem, so stay tuned for the next episode when we tackle the valve job. Thanks for watching.